how did they make all that money? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 bad video games that were successful. For this list, we're taking a look at video games that have received mixed or worse reviews from critics and gamers, yet have still managed to sell incredibly well and make money for the respective developer. We are ruling out titles that sold fewer than 1 million units, while also not including games like Destiny that failed to meet high expectations rather than being outright bad. Number 10, Home Front. And between solar panels and windmills, just enough power to get by. The premise of this first person shooter was an intriguing one. In the not too distant future, a unified Korea have taken their chance to invade a weakened United States. Gamers subsequently began to anticipate a game that could rise above the others in an overcrowded genre. Let's stitch the rifles. We need to keep a low profile. That initial lure was all the game offered for many players, who believed that the campaign fell into the lazy cliches and tired gameplay that so many other titles had done before. The single player could be finished in five hours, and so we imagine that a large chunk of the 2.5 million copies were returned to the store pretty quickly. I thought there'd be more guards. You must have heard you what coming and split. This? Number nine, Game of War Fire Age. Do you want to come and play? Game of War, play for free now from the App Store. Rather than actually being a quality game for strategy fans to enjoy, this mobile title has one purpose, to get as much money from you as possible. Hey, we know the game's not great, but who cares? It's free, but it's not free. If you charge 40 cents here and 50 cents there, then it's not free. They see through the charade. Your progress through this relatively boring title is totally dependent on the amount of money you're able to sink into developing your armies and strongholds. When you inevitably need to reinforce, the gorgeous Kate Upton is always on hand to trick you into bypassing the inordinately long wait times and enhance your empire. Despite being one of the highest grossing apps ever, it does nothing to improve the strategy genre, but sure is an impressive masterpiece of aggressive marketing. You can meet some of my friends. Number eight, Connected Ventures. Unbelievably, this sports game has sold more copies for the Xbox 360 than incredible titles like GTA V and Minecraft. Granted, it did cheat a little by coming pre-packaged with a Kinect motion camera, but such a repetitive experience shouldn't be the best selling game ever for a console. Unlike other Kinect enabled games, the motion controls here are actually pretty solid, but after a short period, you'll grow very tired of the limited minigames. Would it still have shipped 24 million copies if it didn't come with the Kinect? Absolutely not. Number seven, A Bug's Life. Surely we can just ignore the unrefined gameplay and clunky controls as it's a children's 3D platformer, right? Sadly not, as this movie tie-in offers little for anyone, let alone kids. The graphics do look relatively similar to the film universe that it's based upon, but the gameplay is far too mundane to suck you into Flick's adventure. The movie's profile and brand power was enough to make over 3 million customers shell out 40 bucks for a data title with a camera that made playing the game a chore for both parents and their offspring. Number 6, Aliens Colonial Marines. Rise and shine, Marines. This isn't a drill and you aren't in Kansas anymore. It's pretty well known by now that games shown off at E3 do not represent the final product but this FPS was so far away from the demo that it actually became the subject of a controversial lawsuit. Plaintiff Damien Perrin claims that Gearbox and Sega falsely advertised aliens by showing demos at trade shows like PAX and E3, which didn't end up being accurate representations of the final product. These proceedings, however, won't work out who is mostly responsible for a disastrous production cycle that repeatedly changed creative direction. Whole levels and missions were removed or altered as too many cooks added their flavor to an increasingly jumbled recipe. Are you out of your damn mind? Get to the umbilical! Evidently, it was that same misleading demo that made nearly 1.5 million people buy this buggy game that was pretty much unplayable upon release. Number 5, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. 
Even the most devoted Sonic fanboys can't defend this glitchy mess that barely has a redeeming feature in it. Elise, smile. Many have said that the introduction of human characters to the story bordered on bestiality, and even if you remove the game-breaking bugs, it would barely be passable as a platformer due to its terrible controls. Jump! Over 2 million unfortunate customers endured the extortion at low times to find that the numerous glitches were pretty much the only source of entertainment in yet another Sonic failure. Are you okay? I'm so glad that you came. I always keep my word. Number 4. 50 Cent Bulletproof oh, hell yeah. Yeah. We can easily see why this third-person shooter sold nearly 2.3 million copies, seeing Fiddy during the height of his career as a bona fide action hero taking on organizations far larger than his own set of gangsters is kind of appealing, right? For anyone who has little interest in the rapper or his comrades, however, there are few morsels here to sink your teeth into. The controls are at best tricky, and the linear layout of the game leaves you with little to do other than run headfirst into yet another group of very vanilla henchmen. Fiddy, I'm in fucking trouble, man. Can you meet me? Tell me where you at. Number three, we play. There's nothing glaringly wrong with this set of minigames that introduce you to the functionality of the Wii, but it's just so limited that it really shouldn't have been a game at all, let alone the fifth best-selling game for the console. The nine minigames can be breezed through in under an hour, and are not engaging enough to warrant another playthrough. Another flawed Nintendo title, Wii Music, similarly sold far more copies than it should have, but its 3.2 million units still are minuscule compared to the 28 million copies of Wii Play that were shipped. Our theory? It sold so well because it came with an extra Wii remote. Number 2. Enter the Matrix Had this dull action-adventure title been released after the Matrix Revolutions let down audiences, it probably wouldn't have sold as well as it did. 5 million copies flew off the shelves, as fans expected an experience that would allow you to recreate the gorgeously choreographed action of the film series. Instead, you were kind of left mashing buttons at random in the hope that the game wouldn't glitch out before you could execute an underwhelming flying kick. We'll tell you exactly what you need to hear. Don't go anywhere near this dingy entry to the franchise. Man, reality can be a bitch. Tell me about it. Before we reveal our top pick, let's have a look at these dishonorable mentions. Number 1. Pac-Man Atari 2600 Version Not only is this port of the classic adventure maze game an abysmal assault on the senses in its own right, it also managed to tarnish the status of one of the most legendary video game characters of all time. Stick with me. You'll get the hang of it. The gameplay was at best broken. Yet, the smaller capacity of the Atari 2600 meant the ghosts, pellets, and map were reimagined as flat, colorless versions of their originals. Also, the ghosts would teleport all over the place for no reason, and the maze didn't resemble anything like the arcade version that inspired it. Despite failing to live up to the original in almost every imaginable way, it sold 7 million copies and became the best-selling game for the console. It's really no wonder the industry crashed the following year, right? Do you agree with our list? Definitely. Which best-selling game do you think doesn't deserve its commercial success? For more top tens that pretty much deserve to be successful, published every day. Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.